from Nandi, Harleen Lusui. Leo ninaposimama hapa nataka kuambia ni sisi mimi na wewe ambao tuko na suluhisho la ukabila sio serikali sio na ni mimi na wewe kwa hivyo sisi hatutakuwa wale wa kukaa chini na kungoja mtu waje afanye tutafanya wenyewe I did not see the spaces uh, and the document Adeline, but when Jola came I asked please John, stop Ladies and gentlemen the person going home today is Hardlin Nusui. My name is Hardlin Nusui. Uh, a local from around. I'm a patron of this school. This is Shabara Primary School. I went to school here. This is where I sat from a KCP. So from time to time I check in here to find out what is going on. And uh, generally how we are doing. Well, currently we are working on a number of things, but the most important is uh, preparing our standard 8 uh, pupils for the, the forthcoming national examination. And we are hoping for the best, by the way. And uh, we are also going to break some records here. My first interaction with Yenuka was in Kitale, where I had to be interviewed. And then uh, I marched uh, as the top contender for Nandi County and they picked me to represent Nandi County in the program Mwongozi Kenya so we went ahead uh, to check in some kind of academy where we were basically taken through a rigorous leadership uh, program that was more physical than you know sitting down and cramming stuff mm. and then uh, when the program uh, advanced to very serious stages I think uh, I slept in class to Dogo, so I didn't make it to the final really, <laughs> but uh, I made it to where I did, and uh, that was no mean fit. After Wongoze, I stayed in Mombasa for an additional three, two years, during which time I was basically involved in a uh, youth and farming program, uh, whereby I was asking youth to embrace farming, not just big time farming, but even kitchen gardens, because uh, there was a problem with fresh food, so that is basically what I did for those two years. I I went around Mombasa County, we talked to you, we helped others, you know, start farming and get into all that. So after that, now I had to move home. Home is here. So when I came here, basically here we are farmers, so I mean there was nothing I was going to do more in farming here. Apart from maybe to just add a bit of, you know, technology here and there, a bit of advice here and there. And then uh, I also thought, how about visiting the schools around here? This is my ward, it's called Kaporen Ward in Nandi County. How about visiting schools here and find out how they are faring? So sometime last year, 2015, I came in here and I requested that I should talk to pupils, especially those who are going to sit for exams, because other than all the stuff I do, I like talking to people and encouraging them and telling them, man, life is not about, you know, working in the bank and making it. There's more to life than just what keeps being drummed into our heads. So on 15th October, I had a sitting with class 7 and mm -hmm. 8. So we had a sitting and uh, I greeted the people and then I asked them, what language do I use to address you? These are class 8 and 7. And they told me Kiswahili. So, okay, Kiswahili is a Luga Taifa. But then I asked them, other than Kiswahili language, is there any other exam that is set in Swahili? Because all the other papers are set in English. So, during our interaction, I discovered there was some gap in terms of uh, general knowledge general knowledge and communication, especially verbal communication, these kids could not communicate fluently. And even that Swahili was not fluent. So I discovered the problem was a box. The school didn't have books. Although when we left the school, it had a 
a library on the other side and very many books so i don't know in between the time we left and now what had happened because you're talking about a difference around 15 years or 20 years so there was there were no books the kids could not read they could not comprehend so much i was touched and uh, this were kids who were going to sit for their exams honestly and even when the results came it was disastrous and the first people had how many marks 266 it's you know reality sunk mm. so i came here and talked to the head teacher and told him how about i ask my friends to give me books and we bring books here let's just bring any type of book so that we have these people developing a reading culture because there was none so he agreed and i called on people on social media actually i used social media i have that facebook post and I told friends, I called on friends to get me books. And the response was, was, was overwhelming. I got so many books. I got so many, you know, I got so much assistance. The books came, money came. We had a good collection at the end of the day. So that's why I told you I am monitoring because the teachers are also committed. We have agreed and they are committed. So we are expecting we are not expecting 262 again. Come next year, we have results. We have results and uh, that is just the first step. When I got the support, it didn't end there. Some people kept coming back to me and asking me, do you still need books? Do I kept telling them yes. I have books due for collection from my friends. So then I decided I want to expand this. I did for Chebara Primary School, I did for Church of Christ, a school just near where I stay. So now I'm moving to the next school. I've done two. And to do the third one, most probably before they close uh, for December holidays. And then now I can expand into the entire world. But basically we have issues with the, the reading culture around here. Yeah, <laughs> right. okay. I wouldn't do so much in mathematics, personally. <laughs> <laughs> but then we got books as well. Mm -hmm. We got actually we got some like a friend who gave me books from abroad. These were wide, you know, wide subject subject books mm -hmm. but, uh, from music. You know, these kids have to read just anything that is in front of them. Mm -hmm. That's where it starts. You read anything. When I was growing up, my father had a library of James Hadley Chase. I started reading James Hadley Chase when I was very young. I did not even comprehend. But sentence construction and all that came from reading James Hadley Chase. I didn't even know what James Hadley was all about, but it helped me, you know, construct my sentences, write my composition. I would relate to something I had read and do a composition. So that's why we're encouraging they should read. Because when you read, then you understand. When you read agriculture today, a, 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 a book on agriculture, even if you don't see it for that exam, mm -hmm. then you understand that crops need both the sunlight and the rain. If you don't, you can't comprehend that. Uh, the last two, three weekends, I've been moving around Mandi County. And I, I captured that on social media. I've been to Mosul, I've been to Nandi Hills, I've been to this part of Aldai, Kimeloi Maraba. And there's something in Uungosi that I learned that is really killing us as uh, a population. There is so much um, what we call uh, tribalism currently. It is so much. So that's what I walk around sensitizing people because this is a school, Chebara Primary School. These kids are innocent, they come to school. They don't bother about when I was here, when I was here in school, my name was not Chepchumba. It was still hardly in the swing. I didn't really mind where Chepchumba had come from. She was my friend. I didn't mind where. Whoever they, come come from. From, they were my friends. So if we walk around trying to, you know, bring these kids together, tell them to learn to read, do groups and all that, we try and kill that tribalism. Another aspect uh, that I picked from Moses is that you don't have to be in power to lead. When I walk around Nandi and say Tembea Nandi, we are changing leadership, people ask me, are you going for women rep and stuff like that? <laughs> I'm not cut out for that. I mean how do I even start going to now? I want what's here in some 50 book. I can't. But then I'm just walking around to sensitize people, let them know that you can lead from whatever capacity. When I came here and said that I was going to do a book harvest, I was a nobody. I really was a nobody. But after talking to the staff and the members of this school, they decided I was going to do it. 
and I did it and we achieved something. So I try to tell people you can't always lead from the front, from the top. You can always lead from whatever capacity you are. It starts mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. Leadership starts with anybody who's willing to change the society. <laughs>